Love yourself. Don't judge yourself. You have been judged so much, and you have accepted all this condemnation. Now you keep hurting yourself. No one considers himself worthy enough, no one considers himself a beautiful creation of God, no one thinks that he is needed at all. All these are poisonous ideas, but they poisoned you. You sucked the poison with your mother's milk and that was your whole past. Humanity lived under a dark, dark cloud of self-condemnation. If you judge yourself, how can you grow? How can you ever become mature? And if you condemn yourself, how can you worship existence? If you cannot worship existence within yourself, you cannot worship existence in others, that is impossible. You can become a part of the whole only by deeply respecting the God who dwells in you. You are the host, God is your guest. Loving yourself, you will know this, God has chosen you as his guide. Having chosen you as his guide, he has already paid you respect, showed love. He didn't create you by accident, he created you with a certain purpose, with a certain potential, with a certain glory that you have to achieve. Yes, God created man in his own image. Man is destined to become God. Until a person becomes God, there is no satisfaction, fulfillment for him. But how do you become a God? Your priests have told you that you are a sinner. Your priests said you were doomed to end up in hell. And they made you afraid to love yourself. This is their trick aimed at cutting off the very roots of love. And they are very insidious people. The most insidious profession in the world is that of a priest. He says, love others. And now love will be plastic, synthetic, fake, fake. They say, love humanity, motherland, fatherland, life, existence, God. Big words, but completely meaningless. Have you ever encountered humanity? You always encounter human beings, while you condemn the first human being you encounter, that is, yourself. You don't respect yourself, you don't love yourself. Your whole life is wasted judging others. That's why people are so good at finding flaws. They find flaws in themselves, how can they avoid not finding the same flaws in others? In fact, they find them and exaggerate them, make them as much as possible. It seems like the only way out, you have to do it to somehow save face. That is why there is so much criticism and so little love in the world. I say that this is one of the deepest sutras of the Buddha, and only an awakened person can give you such an epiphany. He says, Love yourself. This can be the basis for a radical transformation. Don't be afraid to love yourself. Love totally and you will be surprised, the day when you get rid of all self-condemnation, all self-disrespect, the day when you can get rid of the idea of original sin, the day when you can consider yourself a worthy and beloved existence, will be a day of great blessing. From this very day forward, you will see people in their true light, and there will be compassion in you. And it will not be cultivated compassion, it will be a natural, spontaneous flow. And it is easy for a person who loves himself to become meditative, because meditation means being with himself. If you hate yourself, and this is what you do, what you were taught and what you scrupulously followed, if you hate yourself, how can you be with yourself? And meditation is nothing but enjoying your own beautiful loneliness. Celebrating oneself is the whole meditation. Meditation is not a relationship, there is no need for anything else at all, a person is self-sufficient. Man bathes in his own glory, 
bathes in his own light. A person is just happy because he is alive, because he is. The greatest miracle in the world is that you are, that I am. To be. That's why people are constantly looking for companies. They cannot stay with themselves, they want to be with others. People are looking for any kind of company, if they can avoid the company of themselves, anything will do. They'll be sitting in a movie theater for three hours watching something completely stupid. They will spend hours reading a detective novel, wasting time. They will read the same newspaper over and over again to stay busy. They will play cards and chess just to kill time, as if they have too much time. We don't have much time. We don't have enough time to grow, to be, to rejoice. But this is one of the main problems created by improper upbringing, you're avoiding yourself. People sit in front of the TV, glued to their chairs, for four, five, even six hours. The average American watches TV five hours a day, and this disease will spread all over the world. And what do you see? What do you get? Burning eyes. But that's always been the case, even if there wasn't a TV, there are other things. The problem remains the same, the person feels so ugly and seeks to avoid himself. But who made you so ugly? Your so-called religious people, popes, Shankaracharyas. They are responsible for how distorted your faces are, they have succeeded, they have made everyone ugly. Every child is born beautiful, but we immediately begin to distort its beauty, cripple it in all ways, paralyze it in all ways, distort its proportions, unbalance it. Sooner or later, he will begin to feel such disgust for himself that he will be ready to be with anyone. He can go to a prostitute just to avoid himself. Love yourself, says the Buddha. And it can transform the world. It can ruin the whole ugly past. It can usher in a new era, it can be the beginning of a new humanity. That's why I insist on love so much, but love starts with you, and then it can continue to spread. It continues to spread by itself, nothing needs to be done to spread it. Love yourself, says the Buddha, and immediately adds, and observe. This is meditation, at least that's what the Buddha calls it. But the first requirement is to love yourself, then observe. If, not loving yourself, you start observing, maybe you will want to commit suicide. Many Buddhists want to commit suicide because they do not pay attention to the first part of this sutra. They immediately jump to the second one, watch yourself. In fact, I have never come across any commentary of the Dhammapada, these Buddha sutras, that pays attention to this first part, love yourself. Socrates says, know yourself. The Buddha says, love yourself, and the Buddha is much deeper, because without loving yourself, you will never be able to know yourself, self-knowledge comes only after. Love prepares the ground. Love is an opportunity to know yourself, love is the right way to know yourself.